This Plinko feature video will cover feature queries. Feature queries enhance the Plinko performance improvement of batch queries by simplifying and abstracting away both the queries and the result sets, leaving you with a friendly syntax and an easy to use result. So let's begin. This demonstration will be using the latest tracker sample application, which is available for download at codesmith.googlecode.com. The only modifications made to this project are that I've added some unit tests to the test project and rows to the database. So we're going to come and look at our first unit test here. And this is just going to show us how to use the future queries in a very simple and straightforward manner. So we're going to create a data context, and then the first thing we're going to do is create a regular iQueryable, and then just call to list against it to populate it. After that, we're going to create three different queries, and at the end, we're going to call dot future, which is going to give us back a future query result, which implements iNumerable, and so we can use those again down here. Now, but when these three get called, or I'm sorry, when these three get created, no calls are being made to the database. Once any one of them is accessed, all three are immediately going to be batched up into one batch query, and then Plinko will go to the database, get all the result sets, and populate the three iEnumerable sets. So then we'll be free to use our results as if they were just regular iEnumerables returned from a query. So let's go ahead and see that. Let's run this test. Now I'm telling this data context to log to the console.out and we're going to watch our output window over here and it's going to show us every time we make a call to the database. So we ran our first query and sure enough a call is made to the database to get back our tasks and then we're going to call our three futures. Notice that no calls are being made to the database and then as soon as we access the very first result set here, so user query B, Plinko batched up all three queries into one batch and sent them to the database at one time. So now as we continue to traverse our queries and populate our resulting entities, no more additional calls are being made to the database. We can see our search succeed, so we got back the appropriate counts and actual objects. So there you go, a very simple way to do batch queries. Just call dot future against the end of your queries. Plinko will automatically batch them up. Again, it makes things very easy and very optimal. So the Plinko future queries also support some other things. In this test, we're going to see that we we're actually able to get a count from doing future. So you don't need to just call an entire query to get the count of a record. So if we run this with the debugger, again, we create our data context. And here we're creating a future query, just as we did above. And here we're going to call dot future count, which will give us back a future value object. And now if I switch my log over again, we can see that as soon as the first thing is accessed, Plinko batches the queries, and we can see that the second query that was made was actually a select count. And so we get the value out of our result. And then again, we're free to proceed with our recently acquired entities. So, future supports count. It also supports first or default. So if we open up this test, similar to what we just did with the count, we can see that here we're going to call normal future query, followed by a future first or default, and rather than bringing back an entire set of records, this will only bring back the very first record. So again, let's run this with the debugger and see that. So we create our context, create our two future queries, they get materialized, and the second query was select top one, instead of just selecting all the ones that match the query. And again, our asserts succeed because we brought back in valid entities. And so hopefully through those tests we can see just how simple and versatile the Plinko future queries are. But they don't stop there, we also support integration with Plinko caching. So if we open up this unit test, we can see that it's just going to call the method below twice. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a data context, we're going to do one normal future query, and then we're going to create a future cache query, a future cache count query, and a future cache first or default to show that we're using all of our future queries, but this time all of them are going to be using cache. What this means is that if the result already exists in cache, the result set will be populated with that value. Otherwise, it will batch all of the queries up together, run them as one batch query, and then bring the results back and store them back into the cache. But again, it's easiest to see this when we run it, so let's test with the debugger. and we set our log and we step through and create our future queries and here all four got run as one batch execute and we can see here that we did a cache insert and here is our cache key that Plinko is transparently managing for you and of course there are three inserts because we had three future cache calls 
one was a normal future cache, one was a count, which we can see here, and one was a select one, or first or default, as we can see here. So now if I hit F5, and we come back into the method again, and we step through, we can see that the cache was hit for these three different calls, so it did not need to go to the server to get those values because they were already cached. However, it did have the one remaining future query, which it batched up, and in this case ran a single query, and brought back the result for us. So, from that we can see that future methods support caching. That concludes this Plinko feature video over future queries. We hope you found it to be helpful and informative. To watch the rest of our Plinko feature videos, please visit us at Plinko.com. My name is Tom DuPont, and thank you for using Plinko.